Hey everybody, let's check out some Tamika Limited Vintage. This is going to be, I believe, just about everything for the August release. And there's a, a lot of stuff to check out. Oh, and thanks very much to everybody that subscribed to the channel. I just hit 100 subscribers recently, so that's, that's great. And yeah, I appreciate the interest and the comments. And um, yeah, just uh, thanks very much for the support. So the first one we're going to take a look at here is the Toyota Land Cruiser FJ60. But interestingly, this is the North American version because it's got the left-hand drive, as you can see. Typical TLV stuff, so very, very good overall detail. Uh, you know, everything you'd expect in terms of the rubber tires, lens headlights, lens taillights. Uh, the only thing, you know, the downside there is, as you'd expect too, there's, there's no mirrors. Other than that though, the detail itself is really, really nice. Like this is a, this is a great, casting and a great vehicle. I've always loved the FJ60 and they've done a really nice job with this. Um, the two-tone, the gray and blue, looks really nice. Great wheels. Um, interestingly too, the, uh, like the underside has been done with more detail. Now they do this with trucks sometimes. The downside is you don't get suspension, but you do get more of this kind of detail that you wouldn't with most of the other releases. And interesting too, we've got this uh, separate piece for the exhaust. So the only other thing that I've noticed with this, the casting, it has a rake to it. So it's pointing slightly down. Now, I tried to do some research on this and figure out, you know, is that um, now normal or is it an issue with the casting? And to be honest with you, I could not, uh, could not figure it out. I've seen photos that have a rake on it, so they, they do look like this. I've seen photos that don't. Is it maybe a difference with the North American model versus the Japanese? Um, is it just a, was it a, a suspension issue on the ones that I've seen in photos? So that, you know if that's an issue for you, I understand. Um, I think the overall model itself is really well done, but again, you know if that is inaccurate, then you know if you're very concerned about those kinds of you know accuracies, then understandably you're probably not going to like this one. But otherwise, you know, if that is not a big deal to you, uh, it's great. We've also got this color as well. So I don't buy all the colors for all the releases, but if it's a really nice casting, and just a vehicle I really like, then I, I do tend to grab the other colors too. And this is probably more the classic uh, version I think most people think of with the FJ60 with this like a metallic beige. And you've got this beige interior with two-tone seats. And again, the detail is excellent. The clarity through the windows is, is excellent. So everything that you'd, uh, you'd expect. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the Subaru Sandbar DS Classic. Quite a mouthful, but quite a little van. Pretty awesome. Uh, if you're into light vans, I guess. This one has an opening feature. Uh, it's got this sliding door on it, so this is going to be one of those things you either like it or you don't. Now, I think the reason they've done this, and we'll take a look at it in a second, is because they produced one for a diorama that has a different uh, interior. and there's a specific reason that they need to have a sliding door on that one, and I think they've just carried it over to the regular casting, which is good, you know, in some ways because it's a, it's an interesting feature, but it's also it's not ideal. Uh, but yeah, nice van. A bit of an issue in the back too, in that it doesn't have the best detail inside. I think unfortunately it's also got to do with the diorama release. If the window wasn't so big, it wouldn't be as big an issue, but uh, that's a, a downside too. All those things aside though, um, I'm fine with it because again, you don't get this kind of release with most of the die cast manufacturers. You know, they don't do this kind of stuff, so I'm happy to have it. This is really cool. I love the, uh, the small vans. So they've also got the dark blue, so exactly the same casting, but just in dark blue. Uh, navy blue, I guess. Now we've also got this Ferrari Testarossa. This is a, a regular release, so just a normal release you can order anywhere. Well, I shouldn't say anywhere, but you know anywhere you'd normally get TLV. The thing to note there is that the yellow Ferraris initially uh, were just released through the Takara Tommy online site as well as the physical stores in Japan. It's kind of like a special release. But now they've started to release yellow Ferraris um, through regular channels. And I think that's probably best, you know. I mean, I know what they're trying to do with the, the special releases and all that, but, you know, is it is it necessary? Otherwise, though, typical Tessarosa, I mean, we've, we've had a few releases like this in uh, red and black. 
great engine and as long as you like yellow then uh, it's a great release so we've had a new casting for the rx7 this is specifically the uh, kind of the later generation rx7 so as you can see the front is slightly different uh, they have released a number of RX-7s in the past, but they're the earlier generation um, FD, I should say. So it's the same... Yeah, I probably should... I word that poorly. It's, it's, a, uh, it's the same generation RX-7, but just a, a later version of it. They've done a great job. I mean, it's a, it's a classic car, and if you're into RX-7s at all, then you're gonna love this. The only downside being, and I have to, I, be, I think I'm a broken record with this with TLV, but I have to basically say it every time. Well, not every time, but for this one, uh, there is no side view mirrors. So you do you do get them, you can stick them on yourself, but um, I th for me, I just don't put them on if they give them to me like that, because I'm probably going to screw it up. And on top of the regular version of that, we also have this Spirit R. I think technically is it a Type A Spirit R? Or Spirit, no, Spirit R Type A. Same generation uh, of car, but you've got the Recaro seats, so you've got these red bucket Recaro seats inside, saved a bit of weight, and there may have been a, you know, a couple other minor changes to it, but essentially, racier version. This one too is, has got different packaging, and I'll show that to you briefly because it's kind of neat. So this has got the Japanese car era packaging, so it's basically a bigger box. It's got this folding flap, for lack of a better word, um, you've got a regular box inside, uh, the car is just here, and then you've also got this great write-up, and if you can read Japanese, then I'm sure it's very interesting. And is it worth it? Uh, not for the packaging, but, but this is a very good release. Like, if you're into the, the Spirit R version, and this is kind of a, definitely a special version of the RX-7, uh, it's worth getting. As a side note too, they are releasing a white version of this car that's going to be a Hong Kong exclusive. So lastly, well, no, not lastly, second to last, we have another Calsonic Skyline. So this is very, very similar to the previous release. Um, there's already been one Calsonic Skyline released. It was the number one car. This is the number 12 car. Otherwise, they're basically identical. You know, there's, there's maybe a few differences. There's probably going to be maybe some differences with the uh, sponsorship decals, maybe. But otherwise, you know, it, it's a very solid release. Uh, if you're into this car, these um, R32 uh, Group A cars. I think this is definitely the best 164th uh, casting that you can get for these. The d downside to them, if you're like into again a very realistic look for these 164th cars, is the it does roll, right? So like the TLVs, they always roll. But because it rolls, unfortunately, it means that it can't get the uh, the camber right. And these cars have crazy camber, so. It doesn't look quite right because um, when you look at the race cars, they're very distinctive in terms of how the camber is, and they're all, all four wheels. But uh, otherwise, it's really nice, and of course, it does have the opening uh, hood and great detail there on the engine. That's one of those kind of love it or hate it features as well. I, you know, most people I think like opening features, but there's certainly a lot that don't. The interior is great. You've got like the um, roll cage in there. We've got the, and this is what I appreciate too, that the flooring and all that is the same color as the exterior because it would just be, again, you know, like metal. Nicely done. We've also got a crepe stand. So, well, I shouldn't say stand, it's a, it's a van, crepe van. Um, this is a second release. The first release was actually a, a coffee van, basically very similar, all the same kind of, um, uh, figures, van, but uh, brown instead of the yellow, and I think different different decals. We'll take a look at this. Um, with all the Tamika Limited Vintage die call releases, you get this really, it's a nice box. It's got some information on the back here, pieces that you get. Uh, so you get this decal sheet and all this stuff. We'll take a look. So we've almost got this thing out all together. Let's take a quick look at what we get. So this is the Actually, I'm pretty sure it's a sticker sheet, so I don't think it's decals as such, but that's it's good because it would be super tough to apply. And you've got a few choices of what you can put on there. So these are probably the signs. You've got a menu, which I can't read. So this is going to be similar to the other die claw releases. Uh, the figures are very similar, uh, but they are different for this set compared to the other sets. Uh, you've got like, this great umbrella. And I... <laughs> 
I like the fact that we've got a tiny laptop on a tiny table. There we go. Go this guy. Then we've got this van here too. This is, uh, I suppose, the the main attraction. So like the other Subaru vans, it has this opening door. But the difference with this one, it actually has like a little kitchen and a dude inside. So let me see if I can get this open. So, as you can see, there's a guy inside. Um, he's got a he's got a cash register. There's like a sink, and just really really well done. Oh, this is great. You can see from this side too. Uh, so and this is pretty typical in Japan. You get these um, these these small vans, these, these uh, K vans, and um, you know have a shop of some kind run out of it, uh, like you know coffee or, or in this case crepes. And yeah, otherwise it's it's really nicely done. And I think if anything, like this is a good use of this opening door. Uh, like this actually works really well, especially with the figure and all that. And this may be why that this casting just like they all have opening doors because they have to. Do, have the opening door to facilitate this, um, which is fine because I think normally I would I'm not a huge fan of the opening doors, but, uh, but this works really well. You know, given what they're trying to do here, the looks of this van are kind of love or hate. I'm on the love side, but you let me know if you're on the hate side. And then we've also got uh, a couple other things. I'm just going to pull out one more here. We've got uh, so there you go. Um, I think this is a great set. But let me know what you think. So that is it for the August releases for TLV. I really appreciate everybody's support. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free down below. And yeah, thank you very much for watching.